Kalu Ghana, operator of the Jubilee Oil Field offshore Ghana. With an output of 100,000 barrels of oil per day, it is a key player in the country's energy sector, working in partnership with the government of Ghana. Talo's operations are located in Takradi and Sekandi, with its hub of operations at the Takradi Air Force Base, where its logistics supply base can be found. The company also has a presence at the naval base where metal fabrication work takes place. The current focus of the company is to make sure the Trinibua Enyura Mintomi project, also known as the 10 project, comes on stream on schedule in late 2016. This is the story of an oil company that has declared a commitment to the principle of shared prosperity. We want to live and work in the communities that we operate in, in a way in which the benefits of our operations are shared between ourselves and our communities. It goes beyond um, sort of the typical industry corporate social responsibility to look into areas where we can deepen the, the ability of the local company to support our operations through uh, supply and services, through capacity building for human resources, and, and, and therefore grow the community along as we grow our business as well. And so, local content is taken seriously. Talu seeks to drive Ghanaian participation through the supply chain and more. Besides, Ghana has in place an extensive law on local content and participation. It's something that the company itself you know, believes is the right thing to do. It's something we're doing four years, five years before the legislation came to pass. It gives us um, our social licenses to work and live in the communities that we're operating. Growing Ghanaian companies is an important part of ensuring local content and participation. If you look at the supplier base, you want to build capacity uh, that they can grow and do other things and probably even export into other countries. And then on the people, on the people side, through the workforce, you train, you develop people and then they also grow. On day one, you might not be attaining the level expected, but over time we expect you to increase your contribution in country through the local content development plan. Because of the speed by which the Jubilee oil field came on stream, there was little local participation. With the 10 project, however, the story has been different. It's part of our requirements in our contract shooting strategy that for our major contractors, for some elements of the work on the 10 FPSO, they had to use Ghanaian companies. Uh, as part of our efforts are ensuring that Ghanaians are participating in the oil and gas revenue and uh, developing their capacity. There are a couple of local companies that have partnered overseas companies that are working together in engineering design, in the environmental area, as well as in the physical installation of uh, the subsea infrastructure, which is phenomenal because, I mean, that's, you know, that's cutting a technology. And to have a team of young Ghanaian engineers and, you know, geologists working side by side with, you know, overseas experts is, 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 is impressive. And it makes us proud as a company, and indeed as a Ghanaian, that um, our people are getting involved in, in, in subsea engineering, which is really a, a, you know, tough environment. We required of our contract our contractor to look for a local to work with and SeaWorld came out top. SeaWorld Engineering, a Ghanaian welding and fabrication company, is now providing important services to the oil industry in Ghana and other parts of the world. Parts of the new FPSO were built by the company and shipped to Singapore for installation. It's all about building capacities to be able to provide the service that these oil companies want and there is an eagerness to build this strength and capacity. Another Ghanaian company that is also providing an important service in the industry is Zeal Technologies. We manage all the waste from vessels that bear at the Takradi port, all waste emerging from the oil and gas industry, and then also mining waste. We manage waste from Liberia, Togo, Benin, Sierra Leone, Mauritania, and Equatorial Guinea. This facility is owned by a Ghanaian and is being run by Ghanaian. All the things that you see, apart from things that we purchase, are installed by Ghanaians. At the beginning, every week, Talo will be sending their EHS here to look at things. They will do a walk around things that are not right. They will say, let's do it this way. They put a timeline on it. They supported us on that. At times, with training, they support us as well to bring us up to capacity. Let's hope for Ghana. Mm -hmm. Yes, if we stick to what we want to do. But one thing is that we have to have patience. Logistics is another area where Ghanaian companies are showing potential. We have demonstrated some 
successes with Ghanaian logistics. They play a really important part and uh, it's a moving train and uh, we, we are actually developing and we're getting better with each day. Badge Freight, a logistics and freight forwarding company in Takrade, transports specialized equipment for Talo. Whether we like it or not, we have a ton of experience that we can you know, pick from. The ad hoc nature in which we used to probably just pack things up, bundle them together, I guess, hurry and get it done with, is no longer the case. If we are willing, with the right attitude, any small business could become something big. The participation of local service companies in the oil and gas industry is growing. At the last count, we had over 340 suppliers for Talo from zero, you know. This is a company that has really demonstrated its willingness to, to, to grow local content. The company, together with its Jubilee partners, created the Jubilee Technical Training Center to train young Ghanaian professionals. What the Jubilee Technical Training Center was set up to do was to enable us grow skill sets in the broad technical areas that supports oil and gas industry. When you go there, you see a simulation of all the important models on the FPSO. So it's an opportunity for Ghanaians to go in there, see the real thing in real life. We want to make them feel ready, we say, for the work that is required out there. So it's geared to get you to work in the industry as soon as you are. Another key intervention to guarantee business for Ghanaian companies in the industry is the creation of the Enterprise Development Center. It's primarily to give businesses a get-go so that they are not starting right from the bottom. It's to empower enterprises to win more work from us. So it has a local content uh, dimension to it. But I think the businesses that have approached us in the early stages found it very difficult to actually appreciate the kind of standards that are required of them, the kinds of rigor that are required of them, and again, the pace at which we work. Through the EDC as well, we introduce them to the procurements that are coming up so that they can prepare themselves, they can look for joint venture partners, they can uh, uh, understand the, 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 the value chain and participate. Talo Oil's commitment to shared prosperity is also evident in the six coastal communities within its offshore operational area. The company has identified education and healthcare as two key areas to support. We've intervened in nursery education, i.e. as people go and about their work. We've noticed, and this is something we identified in the ESIA, that if you start out good in education, there's a likelihood that you have a better chance at what you do. So we intervene at that level. Here, in the fishing community of Amenano, Talo has built an educational facility for children in the community, many of whom had to make a daily perilous two-kilometer journey by foot to the nearest school based in Shama. <laughs> This program is giving them quality education. People from other schools, regions like Volta region, even Central region, has been coming to this school to learn from us. The other strand to our interventions is health. Again, resilient communities, if you're healthy, you have a better workforce. You also tend to have a happier relationship with the communities that you engage. And our investment in health around the CHIPS project is a government program that we've just enhanced. This is not something that we've imposed. We identified that we could actually support this and we've just turbocharged it a bit in the western region. The community-based health planning service, CHIPS of the Ministry of Health, is making a big difference to people's lives in several coastal communities through the active involvement of Talo. We normally provide house-to-house -house services and we don't wait till they get sick before coming here. But we rather visit them, we educate them, we tell them what to do in order not to fall sick. Chip on the community in the Indian for super or chip on the first thing will be Yalia, Bab, Pre and Sana, what the Noko drain in our health center. We say chip will be a baby, I will be a young for a card and a number. I call for Mukruma 
obi wo a abrante obi ya dwuma ho awu sesi a intimidia me yema nka chip compound bo masai be si ba kwa ka ho in the long term talo is hopeful that the partnership between it and the government of ghana will be of benefit to the country i think if we get our art right this an industry that can grow and make opportunities uh, available to the country grow its economy and bring in new talent and skills or tap into the talent of our people in new areas. I think the important thing is to focus on developing the skill sets systematically and making sure that as we progress and as the industry grows, you know, there are more and more local opportunities for there are more and more opportunities for Ghanaians and local businesses to to, to, to play a role in it. I, I'm convinced that that would happen. Thank you.